Welcome back, listeners. Are you ready for Chapter 5? Sifting Through the Ashes. It'll be dark soon. I wanted to get back to the house while it was still light out. This whole thing makes me nervous. What if it is an arsonist and this is just the first fire in a series? Mom said this while pacing around the burned out shack, kicking little puffs of sand here and there. I could see that she was agitated. She had been looking around, rubbing her hands together. Taking care of everything since Dad's death was rough on her. She kept the island's only newspaper, the Foghorn. She kept it going, relying on the goodwill of past contributors and with a few clever ideas of her own. I thought the best one was a medical column that had recruited a local Native American healer to provide advice. Many islanders had faith in her. Mrs. Dawes, I'll take you and Lily back home, Sibby declared. Hmm, this wasn't the first time Sibby seemed to want to help Mom out. Her shoulders dropped and she looked up at Sibby. Thank you. I would feel much better if you could look around the house with us to make sure nothing seems off. Sibby smiled, a very bright smile indeed. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Don't want anything to happen to you or Lily here. Please call me Becca, Sibby. Ma'am is too formal. It was settled. With one last look at the rubble left by the fire, we headed to the surf line, walking back to our house with our stalwart protector. Sibby, hands jammed in his pocket, humming, coming through the rye. But soon, Mom and Sibby chatted. How are your new ideas for the newspaper going, Becca? Sibby, by the way, was Mom's printer for the paper, the Foghorn. Mom's the editor-in-chief, owner and chief cook and bottle washer. The new health column is very popular. Tabitha Blue Smoke is giving some simple Native American remedies that will go over big here since they don't require doctor or pharmacy. I've gotten several more new subscription requests. My next idea is to run installments on a weekly basis of local myths, histories, and folklore from the residents. Mom was really warming to the subject. I also want to have the sports team captains write a recap of games and especially season finales. All good ideas, Becca. I will have to dig through my clabber to see if I can give you a story to make your reader's hair stand on end. Where in the name of St. Basilius did he get the pirate talk? I will have to ask him. If he gets a parrot in a peg leg, I will not be surprised. But Mom laughed and seemed to relax. She and Sibby chatted about the foghorn. I had a bad catarrh two weeks ago, and I tried some of that bone set tea Blue Smoke's health column recommended. Dang if it didn't work. What the heck is a catarr? It sounds fatal to me. Oh, it's just a cold, Lily. Then why do you have to set your bones to get rid of it? The native healing is losing me. It's just an old-fashioned name for the herb that helps cut the mucus production in a cold, Mom explained. Oh, I see. A snot stopper. I snorted at my own joke. Ugh, Lily. Sibby guffawed. What a silly word for a rude laugh. This fascinating conversation made the walk back to the house go quickly. I looked up at Mom's quick intake of breath. The screen was hanging off the kitchen window, and the screen door was slightly ajar. Oh dear, what's next? Chapter 6, Wingnut Fails Crime School. Tune in next time. Thank you, listeners.